The single player campaign in Barotrauma is a randomized freeform collection of missions and objectives that help to guide your journey to deeper and more rewarding parts of Europa. This video is going to cover the different types of missions you can get, what you should expect, and some recommendations on what to bring with you. Starting off with the most basic mission type in Barotrauma, we have cargo missions. These involve you transporting different goods from one station to another. These missions are straightforward and easy to complete. Simply navigate from one station to another. However, do expect that along the route things can go wrong. Your ship can be attacked, harpooned, infested, and you can even lose your cargo should it touch water or fire. My recommendation here is to have a fast ship with a well-protected cargo hold. Salvaging an artifact in Barotrauma can take one of two variations. They will be located either inside an alien ruin or a cave system. Regardless of which one you receive, they both require you to locate and extract an alien artifact. This will be displayed on your sonar which will guide you to the entrance and then from there you need to exit your ship and begin exploration. Expect walls and rocks to block your way as well as monsters and traps to kill and slow you down. My recommendation is to bring lots of oxygen, a plasma cutter, an underwater scooter, and possibly an underwater sonar, especially in the ruins variant. Do note that once you have the artifact in hand, you will not be able to use your underwater scooter. Continuing the salvage section, we also have wreck salvages. On these missions, you will need to find the log from a member of the deceased crew. You will need to cut or pry your way through doors and walls until you find the ship's log. Expect to be met with a variety of monsters, infections, and dangers inside and out of the wreck. These salvage missions are a hotbed of monsters, organisms, and flesh guns that make it dangerous and challenging. That being said, the loot from these missions makes it worth the risk. You can find oxygen cylinders, diving suits, welding gun fuel, medical supplies, reactor rods, and weapons. My recommendation is to bring an underwater scooter, a crowbar for the doors, plenty of oxygen, a plasma cutter, and most importantly, an automatic weapon. You should try and take things very slow. If you can, scout the wreck from a distance in advance and be prepared for something behind every door. This is definitely a mission where a shoot first and ask questions later approach works in your favor. Next on the list is beacon stations. These missions require you to locate and repair a small underwater station that has stopped sending out navigation poles for submarines. The main focus for this mission is to re-establish power to the station and turn on the beacon. To do this, you will need to fix leaks, pump out water, turn on the reactor, and ensure all the wiring to different components is correct. Once the power is on and the water is drained, you can turn on the beacon and leave the station. But before you do, make sure to have a look around as there are goodies hidden away in the lockers and storage units. My recommendation for this one is a bit of a long one. Make sure to bring oxygen, a welding tool, a plasma cutter, a spanner, a screwdriver, some wire, a fuel cell, and a character with a decent mechanical or electrical engineering skill. A final note on this one is that the beacon station needs to remain active all the way until you reach a station to complete the mission. Next on our list are mining missions, where you need to locate, mine, and extract different minerals located deep within a cave system. These caves have a wide range of things to slow you down and try and kill you. You will encounter some of the following. Poisonous gas that quickly depletes your oxygen, thick undergrowth that slows you down, impassable rocks that you need to break with a plasma cutter, and monsters such as mud raptors and spinelings that can attack at any time. Do note that when you find these resources, they are not named as the final resource you are after. You need to mine them out with a plasma cutter to find out what's inside. My recommendation for this mission is to bring an underwater scooter, over 10 canisters of oxygen, a plasma cutter, weapons to fight monsters, and if you get lost easily, an underwater sonar to navigate through the cave system. Just make sure to leave plenty of space for your mining loot. As a final recommendation on this one, make sure to have all your crew repairing, operating weapons, and on emergency tasks, as you will be outside the submarine for a very long time. 
Next on the list are combat missions, which are some of the most varied, intensive and rewarding missions in the game. I am going to break these down into four different categories from easiest to hardest. First off, we have killing medium or swarm pack monsters. These are usually in open water and are split up into different groups that can be easily aggroed one at a time. Regular coil guns are best for taking these out with standard coil gun ammunition. Second on our list, we have killing large monsters. These are either big individuals or medium swarms. You will again find them in open water, but this time you will feel the impact of the attacking monster. This will knock you from your station temporarily and cause flooding immediately in the area they attacked. This can send the ship to the ocean floor very quickly. I recommend that you use piercing or explosive rounds for the coil guns, and if you have a railgun, make sure it's front and center to inflict the most damage possible. Third on our list, and notching up in the level of danger, is killing cave monsters. These missions will see you either eliminating nests or medium level monsters deep inside cave systems. These targets move fast and do a lot of damage, but are easy to find. I recommend plenty of oxygen, a scooter, an automatic weapon, explosives, medical supplies, and a plasma cutter. The last one on the combat missions is the abandoned stations. These missions are obtained, as the name suggests, when you enter an abandoned station. Bandits have taken over the station and are also holding hostages. You will need to carefully navigate your way through the station, killing or subduing any bandits you encounter. Once everything is clear, you can escort the hostages back to your submarine. This is one of the more difficult missions in the game, as bullet wounds do a ton of damage and you can bleed out very quickly incapacitating your character. However, with great risk comes great reward. There is plenty of loot. You will get everything from basic crafting resources, medical supplies, reactor fuel, and most notably, guns. Lots of guns. My recommendation for this one is to make sure that you have automatic weapons, ballistic armor, first aid, and your medical officer on standby, fully stocked, ready to go, should the need arise. As a final thought, I would not recommend bringing additional crewmates, as they have the annoying habit of standing right in front of you just when you're about to take your shot. You can have your cake and eat it too. Side missions allow you to do more than one thing, and it's all tracked on your sonar. Whilst these missions do not have a direct impact on your standing or offer any monetary incentive, they do clear the way for new settlements and stations. Opening stations in strategic locations can help increase your mission rotation and overall variety. This helps a lot when grinding it out for those much needed upgrades. Depending on the side mission, you might be given a beacon station or an objective to kill a large monster the beacon station potentially also being profitable depending on the loot found inside. My recommendation is grab some extra supplies should you feel the need to take on one of these side missions. The final mission on our list is actually no mission. Now, no mission doesn't mean that there isn't anything to do when you travel around on your submarine. It just means that there is no core objective. However, there is usually more to do because you're more focused on exploring than reaching a specific location or completing a specific task. During a no mission, you can find some of the following. Abandoned submarines, substations, caves for mining, large monsters, beacon stations, artifacts, and more. Whilst you can combine some of these activities on regular missions, the No Mission really is a great way to focus on exploring the riches of Europa. You are free to define your own goals and can spend literally hours on a No Mission going back and forth looking for those hidden goodies. That's the end of our missions list for Barotrauma. Let me know in the comments below which ones are your favourite or if I missed anything important. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button if you want to see more content, and until next time, peace. Na, na, na.